We'll start with, start with demos, and um, please introduce yourself again with your name and your website, and just give a quick description of what you did and show us what you worked on. Um, and I hope everybody gets something to show. Doesn't matter how big or small the thing is. Uh, if you feel like you didn't quite finish what you wanted to get done, that's totally fine too. And I'm glad what you did anyway. Okay, um, I'm Christian Meiske, tmeiske.de. Um, and I wanted to add uh, comment plug into my feed reader to TRs app. So that whenever I read a post, um, I can directly reply without leaving the, the reader itself. And here you see the uh, my reader, the local development instance with uh, different feeds here. So you uh, click and have the content here. What I now did was uh, first add a, a preferences panel so that I can re register my own uh, identity and my profile. <coughs> So uh, the usual micropub authentication and authorization is done. And in the end, uh, I'm registered. And now, And there is this uh, comment post that I can detect my identity in case I have multiple ones and write a comment. Uh, I actually didn't get uh, the, the link extracted, but I can um, Fetch it out of the network. Okay, there it is. And there is my comment. And what else? Uh, in case. Uh, I need a, a better interface. There is a button reply with quill, which opens a, oh, something is wrong. Yeah, it's three ms And then uh, the URL is pre-filled and I can uh, post the content again. Yeah. That's about it. Great. Nice. Uh, I can't see the.
Okay, so um, I, uh, I was, my name's Jeremy Chirfus, jeremychirfus.net. I was trying to um, display web mentions in my Grav blog um, and uh, with help from Aaron, the, the problem was that, that the data that was being gathered was, was very, very disparate depending on how much was in the um, uh, web mentioners page and it was very hard to, to get the information out of that. So I decided to see if I could use, instead of using full parser, use x-ray. Um, I got that bit working so that um, I now have uh, um, I now have much more consistent um, data coming in on the um, on the data received from from the web mention plugin. Um, unfortunately, when it, I tried to get it to display, um, there's now a a, a different problem, um, which is that it. it According to the plugin, if this exposed data is set to true, the plugin will expose to the graph system um, details about the, the web mentions that have been received. The problem now is that I think I've got some kind of conflict there because it, it although um, the, the data exposed is true, it's not showing anything. So I think, I think I've got to go in and, and have a closer look at what's going on. But at least I'm getting clean data, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, that'll do. Uh, I mean, I can, no, I don't, that, that'll do. Thank you. Last name. Um, <laughs> I killed my WordPress uh, portfolio site today, um, set up a Jekyll site, and um, well, the resolution doesn't look good, and uh, pushed it into an S3 bucket, set up CloudFront, and fiddled around with some ad additional collections, and that's where I, uh, uh, that's where I am now that makes it possible to post different content types to, um, well, it's not really showing what I wanted. Where is that? So uh, Jekyll out of the box doesn't support more than two different post types and I wanted to do a personal site with different uh, content types like skills and, and uh, projects and that's where I am right now. So it's nothing much but um, at least I got some of the, the includes working. My name is Walter, and my website is walterebert.com. And I've been working on uh, my uh, web statistics tool. Uh, this is what I'm using at the moment, J uh, A W stats. Um, which is not maintained anymore. The last re release was in 2009. Uh, the problem is that 
this chart is made with flash. So I want to replace it um, with D3, but I haven't used D3 uh, really yet. So I use Dimple, which is a layer around the D3 with ready-made charts. And well, I can, uh, cut this part, so I cut the chart. Um, problem was that uh, the code is PHP 5 based and it used some uh, functions that were removed in PHP 7 and locally I have PHP 7 so I had to code it old school on live on the server and uh, yeah that's how far I got so far mm -hmm. so So, uh, I've been working together with Sven uh, to, uh, yeah, I was already receive, uh, sending private web mentions and uh, uh, Sven was already receiving private web mentions, but I didn't receive private web mentions and Sven didn't send them. So, uh, we decided to change that and uh, we can now send a private mention the other way around. Are you? Uh, uh, so that's what we're going to try. Uh, did you? Like the, the part you can see is his screen. We can show two screens. So uh, I thought, well, let's make a secret URL which uh, tries to, which reads out my things. Can I just resend the old one? No. Uh, that that should work, if okay. if that works. Sh should be able to do that. Then. Uh, yeah, this might not be the interesting part. Yeah, the, pro the, the, the Im interesting part is plumbing, and the interesting part is invisible. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to. Yeah, yeah this is the best way we. This kind of we have to. Yeah, yeah, you see here that if I, I get email, uh, there is a, a new like by Bridgie. So what I'm expecting there is also an email with which uh, there's a private uh, comment. Oh, we should have uh, been getting there. So yeah, the the uh, the private web mention part is that uh, when he fetches my oh there's a this is a normal like yeah that's the, normal that's the one other and the, on the, the and the secret one for for some reason now can't, can't access my token database and those oh, can't okay. create a token so well. something that's broken. <laughs> Again. We did actually send but one, before, so but uh, yeah, we have to try again then. Um, I've got something else. This is um, like my part of the, the whole thing wasn't that hard. I already had some code. This was the thing I did at the intros yesterday. And I thought uh, like uh, on, on your swarm, you can add photos to your check-ins. Uh, but those photos uh, are not always at the check-in and uh, are not always uploaded at the time of check-in. So on your swarm, uh, receive yeah sends you the photo afterwards. Uh, I did already uh, do the update thing, but there was some bug, so I fixed that. And now I can add a picture, for example, for instance, this wonderful picture by Aaron of this pose, uh, which is not on my side. So, 
uh, what uh, on your swarm does is it, it sends the picture just the URL. Uh, so now I'm going to make like this is the post I just showed. This will be the photo from Aaron's site, and if I send this an update query, that's an okay. I can now show that there is oh. a photo. Thing. And it's actually on my server in this, uh, like if we take this, it's on my own site. So it downloaded that, which is, which means I can also do this with on, on your swarm now. So that's uh, uh, updating and uh, private web mentions. Yeah, we can try the web mentions again. Oh, we can try the web I mentions. Think, uh, Yes, there is the like again. And the other one. Okay, fail again. Okay, then, yeah. Not sure why. It did work at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem probably is that I use the file system for nearly everything, and file sy systems have permissions, and if I work as my login user and web server does stuff, and an agent running as its own user does something. I didn't notice that it was already working. Damn it. Okay. So um, I've been working um, on my little project to get rid of Google Pictures, Photos, what, uh, Flickr, so to speak. Uh, my photos are in my Dropbox, so they are as normal images, pictures on my in the in the file system, and I need a client to, uh, uh, yeah, first send them on my mobile device. So I've been uh, working on this. I've uh, wrote a backend today uh, in Node.js. To where's my mouse? Oops. Ah, here. Um, I wrote a backend today in Node.js um, that is going to read in the files on the file system. And yeah, so there's a rest in point to read the files, to get a list of files. Uh, it does uh, scale down the images to um, a resolution that uh, whatever the client desires. And I've written a, a front end um, using a React, Redux, Webpack um, that is going to do the presentation as a carousel. So um, this is how it looks like. Uh, I called the project Panini, so I didn't <laughs> didn't know what else. Um, took me a, a long a long time to come up with this name. So uh, this is the list of pictures that I have. They are um, scaled down to uh, thumbnails. Um, uh, yeah, I can click on them and then. Yeah, down the list and go back, go down again, and yeah, so um, that's I actually I think I'm quite happy how far I got. Um, now I need to get it on my mobile as a progressive web app with a home screen icon and so on, and then I'm pretty much done. Okay.
Frank Yoshi, this is Jan, this is Martin, there is Sebastian, there is Oliver. Uh, we spent actually yesterday as well, but the day with working on the persona thing, we were starting like last November. And um, basically we um, finished this um, table with the different personas we were developing. Uh, one of the tasks was to, to really translate it to English because it was a mi weird mixture between German and English. Uh, now it's English. Uh, we finished the missing maker Bob. That was one of the personas we started last November and couldn't finish that. Uh, and at, in this process, we also found that there has to be a sixth uh, persona as well, which is the social media skeptic Penny on the left side. Um, I won't read this because it's a lot of stuff. Uh, you can read it. It's on the wiki right now, uh, still on the um, URL that's tied to this event, but we actually think it should be something more on the top level or something, because this is going to be the basis for uh, a couple of things we plan to work on. Um, you can read this if you're interested. I think it's quite... Also, we would like to get your feedback on that. Um, while we were doing this, and this is probably something Sebastian can tell more about, um, we were thinking that the old generations graphic, some of you might know, is missing a particular type of uh, person, actually, which is basically our maker Bob. That is not not particular development leader like the most nerdy kind of people, but a lot of like people here in the room are maybe in that maker Bob direction. So they are not exactly development leaders, but they are technically skilled far more skilled than others, and they're, yeah, well, they're probably, they should be in the generations graphic even between uh, the first and the second stage, so we might even consider updating that, and would also like to have your feedback on that, of course. So there's some, Sebastian took some notes, what we were discussing, and the next step would be uh, to, like, develop real the things, the steps we could take to approach each, each of these, these personas. That doesn't have to be right now, but maybe in the future as well. But this is what we basically worked on the whole day. So that's it. Yeah, besides working with them on that, I, for myself, also get a little bit of work done on my uh, own project, making my website better. And I also programmed my little iBeacon, or it's not an iBeacon, but it is a beacon. And I'm now spamming em every one of you who has an Android telephone with my website. <laughs> so if you look on your notifications, you will see a link to my website. If you have Chrome for iOS. Then it works as well. Yeah. On the home screen. Do I need, need to oh, enable that? Yeah, I don't get enable Bluetooth. What about the iPhones? Yeah, that yeah. works. If you have Google Chrome installed and it you have to add it to your uh, your widget thing, notification window. Uh -huh. Add Chrome there, and then uh, you can okay. it'll show in the little Chrome section. Yeah, okay. I don't I don't have <laughs> this. It's not particularly useful, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I think about it, uh, it make, makes a lot of sense for presentations when you have an audience and you can post your uh, <laughs> a link to your slides at the same time uh -huh. or something like that. That's yeah. cool. Would you get hold of those people? 
Uh, online store. Okay. What's it called again? Uh, Hook.js. Uh, Hook.js is also the website. Yeah. Well, useful for shops and restaurants. As we come with Google, they have announced their weekends. Yeah, it's it's one of them. Yeah. Works with all the same. All the same? Yeah. 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 Mozilla had one, Google had one, just one of the same. I was at a presentation in Bamberg a few days ago, and they there were a little agency that uh, presented this thing, and they said um, there's only one hard-coded um, uh, link possible. There are two ways you can have the physical web, which posts a link, yes. or you can have something that's more like a, a particular code or a unique ID you can post, and then you need an app who reacts to that ID. Okay. Broadcasting you around. So the thing is, I, I read about this thing just a few hours ago, and I saw it, and this looked like far more functional, but maybe I just don't. Yeah. And the idea is you put the functionality as you are. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah. So, sorry. No problem. Thank you so much. So, I'm Alex, this is my website. Um, so yesterday I never uh, heard about microformats and web management and things, so that's why I had to prepare my website first. And um, before it looked like this, with some different sections, my apps and about me section where there was nothing. And yeah, I changed the layout a little bit. Um, I add the V card at the top. Um, added also some more micro uh, formats like um, friends and book review and movies and music will, will come later and uh, then I changed this section a little bit and also uh, create a posting section where you can add some some posts um, to for, for uh, later for adding uh, web mentions to yeah that's it Okay, so where's my notes? Oh, it's cold in here, isn't it? Freezing. Um, I did a bunch of stuff today. Um, first, I... So Christian was quickly helping me at the beginning to add a search function to my site. So to my blog. Um, I still have to style it a bit. Um, but it's, it just searches my site specifically um, and it uses, so I don't entirely understand still how this works, but it uses his server but finds things specific to my site. Um, could probably show you the code but Yeah, I mean, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's pretty cool, and it's something I can continue to learn about. And for most of the day, I was tidying up my site's HTML and CSS so that there are no more file extensions. So here, before it had amberwilson.co.uk slash blog dot html and same with projects and now my blog posts there there's no file extensions um i used 
a local host via um, MAMP to check the functionality before putting putting the sites oh whoops um, live so right here um, what else yeah and I redirected I keep losing stuff. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Now that I've lost my <laughs> my thing. Oh shit! Where did it go? Oh no, I've lost it because I'm still getting used to using a Mac, and I'm really rubbish at it. How do I get to desktop two again? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so on my host, which is SiteGround, <coughs> I had to manually uh, redirect all my blog posts, as you can see here. So I typed in each one here, I did that. So a few people have linked to a couple of things on my site, so now it will be redirected because I changed from HTTP to HTTPS and changed the file extensions. Um, the last thing I did was to go to Indie Webify and again, read through the levels. Uh, so I've passed levels one and two. And so I have a domain name and I can sign in. Uh, with Reddit calls me, maybe I'll do. Shall I do a demonstration? I mean, you you all know what it's about. So I have the Twitter Reddit calls me. Will it show up? Yeah. This works perfectly. Uh, there's still some things to do. Oh no. These LinkedIn and GitHub don't link back anyway. Um, and the second one is uh, marking my HTML up correctly with things like H cards, uh, H entries. Uh, yeah, so I went through my blog post and did that, mm -hmm. and on my homepage as well. And I hadn't done that before, so it's really nice that those are functional now. And the last thing is that I sent my first ever web mention, yay, <laughs> to Jeremy's uh, site. How can I find that quickly, Jeremy? <laughs> um, if you search in the sidebar for Amber, there's a blog post called Amber, that's it. Oh, yeah. Or I could just go to my site, maybe, and... Yeah, click it from your site, that's it. So I linked to Jeremy's site on a blog post here and manually sent this web mention. And before it was only showing up as a link, but when I changed everything, when I made the H cards and H entries and E content, put them in the correct places, it then showed up as my post, which is pretty cool. Yay. And that's it, lots of stuff. <laughs> Okay, just one more minute. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, my name is Sebastian, sebastiangregor.net. 
And you may or may not remember what I brought with me yesterday was my general skepticism whether the displaying of Twitter avatars in bridgy web mentions is good UX from a Twitter user's point of view and some legal concerns, um, as well as my desire to provide email as another means for people to subscribe to my content. And what happened yesterday during the bar camp day is we had some really great debates. It was very inspiring. Uh, and maybe the two main outcomes was that this backfeed UX is very complex. We had a whole session about these legal like licensing questions and then terms of service with Twitter, the, their developer policy and so on. But ultimately, my conclusion was that it needs to be driven by goals and means what, what I want to design here. And the other discussion we also had in this email session, we, we kind of reflected on how email is living a little bit of a renaissance with even, especially in the web scene, actually, there's a lot of news, email newsletters, almost like zines, like this old kind of handmade medium. And then when the question pop up, how is this indie web related? Actually, Yoshi said something really great saying that actually it's just yet another channel of syndicating your content. And that's, that's what kind of led to what I did. So what I ended up doing today, apart from working on the personas, was to generally redesign my feedback loop. And this is now mostly a front-end demo, or the back-end plumbing needs to be done later. Basically, the main motto is more indie, less Twitter. So I want to kind of move away further from Twitter, which currently I'm mainly using for people as means to subscribe to my content who don't use RSS. Uh, my goal First of all, to, for myself to have the overview, to have an archive, collect all the feedback that loops are, that are going on, but also to provide a good uh, user experience. And that the side considerations always have these privacy and then legal themes kind of going on, even though we did not conclusively find out what would be the right way to deal with this. <coughs> So what I did, this just to remind you, this is how this looked yesterday on my first demo. So what I would have here is that I anonymized these uh, likes from Twitter by pixelating the, the avatars. Uh, but I would still show um, Twitter comments which were coming through Bridgie if they had some content attached. And then this is a generic content written by, by a user on my website. <coughs> And now we are on the development server. So <coughs> a couple of things have happened, and this is the wrong view, of course. No, wait, sorry about that. We need to go here, yes. Um, it looks different now. First of all, one thing I did, and this is the view for the user who is not logged into my site, i.e. not me. I pulled down the Twitter reply, and also I'm only now indicating that there's a Twitter reply, and you can click it, and then you go to Twitter, and you can read it. But I no longer, I kind of got rid of this whole discussion of ownership licenses. Here it is. <coughs> I do keep uh, comments, and also um, other link backs, but I no longer, basically I got rid of displaying any faces, because I figured out this is not really relevant to anybody's user experience here. There is, however, a difference for myself when I'm logged into the site. I still do see the, the tweet, Twitter uh, reply that I got, and I still do see here the faces of people who like my... So for myself, I still get this loop, but I just got rid of it for the, for the public site. But then what I also implemented here is now going indie with the feedback, I call it Indie Kudos. It's a button at the end of my content which says, hey, did you like this? How about you just tell me? And this is completely anonymous because this is what I might most care about just to generally see that somebody's reading it. <coughs> and once you click this, I still need to work out the UI and the text and so on. Then there's a new Kudos. It says, like, there's two people who have clicked this already. But at the same time, it says, like, would you like to shoot me a comment about it? And that can be sent as a private message or as a public content straight to the page. Other things I would still like to do is I would like basically to move this whole Twitter syndication thingy down here. I also replaced, I put some buttons here and some minor things. Um, one more thing that I did, and that's uh, 
only loosely related to that. I have earlier demoed on earlier webcams, I have demoed this little plugin that I have for syndicating, sending posse from my WordPress. And based on this discussion we had in the workgroup yesterday, I added two more go targets. So now I can, when I create a post, I can say, please syndicate this also to my weekly email digest and to my monthly newsletter. I decided to keep out this kind of biannual one because that's one that I would rather craft by hand and then send out to my contacts who are interested in following just generally what I'm doing. That's what I did, mostly demo wear. <laughs> So is that your own syndication widget, or is it from the Indy Syndicate plugin? Um, that's my own. I, I wrote one. I'm going to show it to you later. How is this working? This shouldn't take long like Microsoft would say. Can someone maybe borrow me a laptop? Like Jim E would be faster. So I didn't did my, my much fancy stuff. Um, I almost slacked uh, the half of the day trying to get PHP working in some point, but then I realized Visual Studio don't like PHP. So I stepped uh, stepped back and did the basic things I said here. We see the same things. Um, I can't talk and. Um, yes. So, level one I already passed before I came here. Now I also have H card working. This is awesome. Maybe I will add a photo to this sometime. If I have a, a nice photo. Um, I also added a little tool section to my site where I just uh, list the tools I use um, just to check out this, um, this blog like um, uh, syntax in micro formats. But yeah, it was, was really nothing much changed on the site and I thought I could do something more engaging and always when my, sh when my boss wants to see something cool I start using jQuery as I did here. So as you can see, this is very important, there's the Indie Webcat and if you hover it, it should meow. But I think the sound is off here. Yeah, it sounds off. Sound is off, but it would meow. You can test it out. Go to renee.dk. This would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Leo. Um, so I was talking to a group of people yesterday on <coughs> the whole thing of the 
uh, authentication for making a decentralized social network. And the conclusion from all of that is that I can rely on the indie authentication to try to actually uh, make it uh, big in the sense that anyone can actually log in, possibly through their email, but to actually ask for that. So I'm actually going to create a service in this platform that I want to create, and I will try to rely on indie authentication for anyone to log in there, so they don't have to actually create several profiles on each one of these platforms. I don't have anything done, I'm only looking for people, so basically what I'm actually saying here is that this will, this will be the solution, I was actually thinking about that, so that's a good outcome. The, the reason why I wanted to be here to make sure that this will actually work as a solution. Uh, thanks Yoshi for this, I mean he gave me quite some input on this. Um, other than that, I was just working on, on the framework that I'm actually building. I actually noticed yesterday there was a bug that this uh, there's a message that says there's a new version of the website, please click here to refresh. It was showing up also on the first time that you access the website, so that's a bug. I uh, should not. And other than that, I was just, yeah, looking at stuff and trying to see the way forward for this. I'm actually working on making, on producing server-side HTML because right now this is all JavaScript, but there is a lot of stuff with accessibility, what happens if you have no JavaScript and all that stuff. So I'm actually trying to work on a, on, on a system and I actually found out, luckily, that there's a library called uh, Light Candy, Light and Candy, which allows you to render JavaScript templates on the back end and produce HTML so you can actually uh, print the page as HTML. So I'm just checking all this stuff and I will start implementing this. And uh, yeah, that's what I did today. Thank you. Okay, so I was reviewing all of the technologies this morning um, and trying to come up with categories of how you could um, interpret the technologies that we use in the Indie Web community for your everyday person. And from that, I decided that I would try and start building a web page, a website that would give your everyday person um, more of an interest in what we're doing. Uh, so this is what I spent most of this morning coming up with and I had a little bit of time to actually put a web page together and uh, give people a kind of, of a similar approach to uh, something that our government in the UK has done. Uh, so it's kind of taking that inspiration for a very sort of simplified, clear way of explaining the different concepts. And over time, I think users could use a website to um, have in their own sort of language that we probably don't put across so clearly, um, but in a way that other people would understand what we mean. Um, there are all the different technologies involved. So. I haven't had time to write all the content, but this is um, just like an example of how you could start putting together all different concepts and put them all together like individual posts. And 
So this is all on uh, GitHub at the moment, but so potentially it could be open source and all of us could contribute to it in the same way we do to the wiki, um, but not having it exactly the same content as the wiki. And uh, as well at the bottom, I've got a, like a footer part, which kind of takes you to the next stage and possibly encourages people to come and attend one of these events. Um, and also search, which is, this is actually based on Jekyll, but I think you could probably put in a, a site search for that to make it easier to find other pieces of content. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've done today. this computer actually connects with an external uh, device. No, not really. Um, what I did today, besides making lots of coffee, was, um, as I said, I wanted to pimp my portfolio a little bit, so I didn't get so far because I got caught up in the web mention thing that I was talking about yesterday. And surprisingly, I got most of it running, so, except for some posts which I still don't understand. For example, this picture, which is also on my website here, doesn't show any reactions underneath the picture, but maybe I will figure this out, I don't know. <laughs> and yes, then I started the actual work, which was, no, where is it? somewhere here yeah um, so this is like my best of photo and graphic collection um, which is still not visible under a public link but I will distribute that at some point when I think it's done and I have this um, gallery plugin and now I just added some more information like this is just one photo taken out of a photo session or used for a newspaper or something like that so people can actually get some background information to the photos I have. Uh, the next step would be contributing this on the <laughs> freshly made Facebook page for that, but I'm still trying to figure out how that works. So I didn't get much done, <laughs> but uh, thank you. <laughs> and the pictures I took today will be up around midnight, I think. <laughs> So I did a little bit of bug fixing, which was um, trying to figure out why photos from Swarm weren't showing up on my site. Um, but now that should be working. So, so this one, for example, was, um, was sent from Swarm. Let me see if I can send one now. If that works, I'll check in. Do, do, do. I'll check in an indie webcam. Oh, I see it. I see Homebrew Website Club. That's good enough. I'll check in there <laughs> and uh, use this photo and say, demo time. Exclamation mark. Check in. And I just dethroned Yoshi as mayor of Homebrew <laughs> Website Club, <laughs> Nuremberg. That was intentional. Okay. Um, so that might might take a little while to kind of get this one back come through. Let's see. 
<clears throat> yeah, I guess, I guess it's going to take a minute uh, for that to show up. But um, one of the other things it did was adding the location um, visibly. If it's a check-in, to have that appear um, with it like that. It looks a bit weird when it's just the check-in without a photo. It's like, yeah, it's OK. So it's playing around with different styles, but um, settled on these kind of long and thin ones. Um, there's a lot of check-ins in the last couple of days. It's mostly because um, Aaron and Amber are having check-in wars now, so I'm getting checked in everywhere. Um, but yeah, playing around with maps, basically. And on the photo page itself, um, Aaron noticed that it's true. I license um, my photos with um, Creative Commons license. So I decided to add that uh, draft property of uh, license to the link off there so we can have a few examples in the wild of, of that happening. Um, see if that's right. Yeah, okay, there we go. Demo time. Checked in at Homebrew website, Love Nuremberg, demo time. And there it is with the with the check-in and everything. So that's all working. Oh, and then one other thing, just at the very end, I had a little bit of extra time. So I've added um, JSON feeds to my site. So you can get JSON feeds. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a um, new format. Basically, it's XML, but it's JSON. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, JSON is pretty straightforward, so it shouldn't take me long to do it. And sure enough, it didn't take long. So I've got some JSON feeds now. Um, and that is it. Can I oh yes, that's right, I forgot. So, um, I'm Aaron, as you all know. <laughs> um, I did a couple things today, only some of which I expected. Um, one of the things was uh, a fix to own your swarm based on Jeremy's bug, um, that the problem that he was having with pictures not showing up. So I made it, um, I made it send the .jpg in the file name, which most people expect to get, and now that should work better for more people. Um, and then I started working on some some fun stuff on my site. So as I mentioned yesterday. Um, my phone tracks my location constantly, and then my website uses it to show things like the weather, the temperature, the local time, the battery level, and then it's also used to geotag all my posts. Um, what I did today was I made it uh, so that my uh, the, the GPS tracking system now pushes the data to my web server every time it's updated, because before I was polling for it, and um, that meant that things were a little bit delayed or out of sync sometimes, so that's nicer now. Um, that also means uh, that this works better now. So I added a, um, I replaced this chunk on my site, which used to show the last thing I ate, and I changed it to show my latest check-in, which I think is more useful. Um, not all of my check-ins show up on my homepage, because if I don't include a picture, um, it's not very visually interesting, so I, I hide it off in the, in the list of check-ins. Uh, so this is my latest check-in, and there's no picture, so I don't include it on my home page. But I still wanted you to know where the last place I checked in was. Uh, so now that's in this little header chunk. And I added the blue dot as well, if I'm still there, which is now updated more uh, quickly when I, when I leave. And there's a very subtle effect here. If you look at the map, it's a tiny map, but if you look at it, it's zoomed way out. It's like the whole country. But as you move your mouse over it, it zooms in. Ooh. <laughs> and I stole that directly from Flickr. That is an <laughs> old, old Flickr UI I used to do that, and it, is lo it has been long gone, and I miss it. So uh, now, now it's back again. It's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, so just three zoom levels. It's enough to kind of get the idea. Country, uh, city, and down to the block, basically. Um, and um, I think Jeremy's computer has my old CSS, so let's do a hard refresh. <laughs> yes, here is the other change. The background of my website changed. And now it is a very large map centered on my current location. 
and it is not supposed to be super useful. It's meant to be uh, very subtle. And like, there's only a couple of words that you can see that kind of give you a hint as to where it is. Also, my current location is in the middle, so you can't even see where I actually am because it's covered up by everything. But as I move around, it'll update, and it'll look uh, probably very different tomorrow when I'm on a plane, and then uh, it'll look different again the next day when I'm back in Portland. So um, that should be fun to watch that as that changes. Yeah, so I guess today's theme was location for me. Yeah. Thank you very much, Yoshi, for hosting. Thank you very much, Yoshi.